So Mark, what can Code Rush do to help us declare methods quicker? Well, the fastest way in is using the M template to declare new methods. So I just hit the letter M and then I hit my template expansion key. We've talked about how to set up your template expansion key using the Code Rush setup wizard. Okay. It's up here. You can run that if you haven't seen that. And you can look at other videos for setting up Code Rush to see how to do that. Yep. If you've set that up, your template expansion key is going to be the space bar or the tab key. So you can just try this M plus tab or M plus space to see what happens happens and if it expands you're great otherwise run the setup wizard so with that said i get this a uh, private method body its return type is void and the method name is selected with an orange block around it okay. so i'm going to create my new method i'll call it take off because we're in an airplane class. I'll hit enter. So here I can enter any parameters I need for the method. In this case, I don't want any parameters. So I'm just gonna hit enter. And you can see it's kind of an orange bar right there. Sure, yeah. It behaves just like the orange box. When I hit enter on it, it's gonna take me to my next entry point, which in this case is indicated by this symbol, which means that's the last entry point for this template. So when I hit enter, the carrot goes right inside the method. So with just a few keystrokes, and, and we're talking big, easy to hit keys, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, we, we, we really have got hit quite quick. Can we go back and maybe just reiterate over that once more? Well, I don't wanna reiterate because I only like to go forward, Rory. You know how I am. <laughs> so instead, let's create a method. Now that we've created a takeoff method, we'll assume we're using edit and continue. Okay. Our plane is in the air, yep. but now we need to land, right? Sure. So let's create a, a method called land. So, okay, so to do it again, M for method, M for method. In your case, I'm guessing space, but that could be tab, right? The expansion, the template expansion key. Okay. Now we have an orange box, which allows us to enter the name of our method. Just type in land. We hit enter. And I'm at the next point. We have a zero width box in this case, because there's no default value. Right. Just that orange line. Yeah. And if you hit enter here again, you'll be into the body of the method ready to write code. It's that simple. Wow. M space land, enter, enter. That's right. And the enter keys, fast and easy to hit. Yep. The tab key or the space bar, both fast and easy to hit. Yep. We're also dealing with lowercase letters, which are pretty easy to work with. That's right. There's no shift keys for your braces or for anything else that might have been entered. That's all been done for you. So Mark, that's the most basic kind of method, but, but what if we wanted a public method? Well, with the carrot anywhere inside the method, we can hit alt up or alt down, and it'll cycle through all the valid visibilities for this member. Okay. And that wraps around. So you'll get, you know, you go from public back down to private again, if you keep going. Right, exactly. So if I'm here, I just hit alt down to cycle back around to go immediately from private to public. I find that most of my methods usually fall into private or public scope. And then the next thing I use most frequently are protected. So usually I start here and I just alt down to pop it right to cycle the scope all the way around back to the top again. Excellent stuff. So we've got takeoff, we've got land, We've got public or private or indeed any other kind of scope that we want. Um, but these are void methods. What if we want to return a value of some kind? If we want to return a value, you could just type it in, right? You could select the void and double click it and then type in string, for example. Sure. But that would burn out your fingers in a short period of time and end the lifespan of your effectiveness of your hands. And as a programmer, we need that. So we want to reduce the likelihood of RSI and we want to reduce the amount of keys that we press. And so to do that, we're going to instead type in the letter M and follow by a shortcut for the type we want to return. Okay. I've got a list of the common type shortcuts over here for the common primitive types, things that you use frequently. So if we want to return a string, we would just type in an S right here. So M for method, S for string, and then our expansion key. Okay. And check it out. Yeah. It just saved us like six keystrokes. That's good, because I would imagine going left, 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 control, highlight, type in the word string, and, and then I've got to get back where I was, wherever that might be. Exactly, right? And there's moving around a lot too, and a lot of times that moving is you're holding down the control key or the shift key if you want to select as well to go get those pieces. So I'm just going to call this get model name. Again, no parameters inside. And now I want to return something. If I want to return something, I can use the letter R, and I can, uh, if I just, let me just drop down IntelliSense here. If I just hit R by itself, it's going to come in and give me a suggestion. This is smart return. This is a template ah. that looks for something that makes sense with regards to returning the string. And so it's going to suggest return string dot empty. And I'm okay with that for right now. So let's say though that I want to change this get model name. And maybe this is airplane class is going to be the base class for a lot of descendants. Yep. And I imagine that I want those descendants to override this and and return their own specific model name for the instance that they have or for the for that descendant. Sure. And so to do that, I'll have to do two things. One is I have to bump the visibility up to protected. 
Yep. And the second thing I need to do is I need to make this method virtual. Sure. Well, if I want to make this method virtual and I'm here, all I do is I hit the letter V and my template expansion key. Excellent. And that, that gives me virtual. Notice down here, V and a space is going to give me something different. Yeah. But if I'm here, V and a space is going to get me virtual. So CodeRush is intelligent enough to know that it's in the signature of a method and, that, and a different expansion is warranted in this case. Right. By the way, if your template expansion key is a tab and you hear me say space, just insert tab there in your head and that will translate it over to the way you've got it. Sure. So now I've got a protected virtual get model name with a default implementation. So, so that's pretty cool with very few keystrokes, right? Again, yeah. to do this, it's just MS, right? Like that. Yeah, method string. Let's get something else. Let's do something that returns like the passenger count, for example. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll create a method that returns an int. So I'll type in M for method. Yep. And looking over on the right, I see those common types. I'm going to select I for integer and then hit the space bar or the tab key. And now I'm going to say, call it get passenger count. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit enter. I'm inside. No need for parameters. We'll show you parameters in a bit. Sure. And now I would want to return something. So I'm just going to use the letter R. I'm going to hit the space bar. And I'm going to type in, um, I'm going to use the uh, the reference from the piece above here. Count like that. Sure. But even in that case, Coderus was clever enough to give you a default of zero. So it knew it was an integer that it was going to be returning. That's right. Okay. So we've got get passenger count. I'm going to hit alt down because I want to cycle visibility around, give it, make it public. And and there we go. So now I've got a nice public method there called get passenger count. Excellent. Notice I have this list of uh, pilots up here. Let's say we want to create a method that takes a parameter and adds the pilot in there. I'm going to copy pilot to the clipboard. And to do that, I'm just going to hit the copy key. I don't even have to select it. I can have the carrot anywhere inside it. Hit the copy key. That's control C or control insert. Yep. And it's copied to the clipboard. Now let's create a method that adds pilots. So just M for method, space bar, add pilot like that. Sure. Hit enter to get inside. And now I want a parameter. Well, a parameter and like a field variable and like a local variable, all three of those are variables. And anywhere we are, if we're inside parameters or if we're inside the method or if we're inside a class, we can declare variables using the letter V. So V for variable, followed by one of those common type shortcuts over there on the right. These that I've listed here, there are many more that we ship with CodeRush. If you want to learn more about the other types, check out the template deep dive type shortcuts video. And Rory and I will show you all the other common types and also show you how to add your own custom types into the engine. Indeed, yes. So we use the letter V. We follow it with that. So we want a pilot of type pilot. Now, I copied pilot the type to the clipboard. So I can actually use what's on the clipboard by using the uh, backslash key right here. So I'll just follow that with the backslash key. And there it's given me a pilot. And I just type in the name of the variable, whatever I want that to be. Mm -hmm. So notice, Rory, that after I hit enter right here, yep. I get a little marker down in here. And if I were to hit enter now, it's going to bring me down into this code right in here. Sure. But let's say I want to add another, maybe I want to add another parameter to it. Like maybe I want to add a GUID, for example, okay. to, to record this this instance of adding the pilot. So I can just hit the space bar, letter V again, and then use the letter G for good, which you see right over here. Yep. Space bar like that right there. Ah, oh, nice. And then give it whatever the name is I want for that variable. Notice right now it's showing me, see those little two little orange triangles pointing at each other? It's saying that's where you're going to go when you hit enter. Yep. So when I hit enter, I go right to the edge. But now look, they've moved down here, which tells me if I hit enter here, I'm going to pop down inside again. The point is that I can use the letter V templates again and again and again until I'm done specifying all my parameters yeah. using the templates. And once I'm done with that, I can hit enter to get inside and write the code for the method, mm -hmm. whatever that code is going to be. Okay? Very good. Yeah. All right. Uh, you can imagine the code that we'd go there, but pilots.addpilot. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say we want to create a method that tells if we're in the air or not. Sure. So we might want to first start it out by saying, okay, we want a method that returns a Boolean like that. Hit the space bar and the method name would be is flying, for example. Yep. Enter, enter. Now, if we want to return a true for this, we can just type in RT like that. Yep. Okay. If we want to return false, we could type in RF. So we can use that letter R and follow it up with value shortcuts, T for true, F for false. There's also N for null mm -hmm. and there's zero so R0 gives me return zero like that. Yeah. And there's also RSE for return string dot empty. So we've got a lot of returning things. So if you need to return values, there are a number of templates that start with the letter R that can help you quickly return values. So for now, we'll just type in RT for returning true in there. Sure. So let's create a descendant of the airplane class. Type in C for class followed by the slash for the type there. 
I want to create this descendant and this is going to be maybe a, a C130 like that. And now I want to override that method in the ancestor class. Yeah. One of the templates that's useful in that scenario is to type in PTOV. PT stands for protected, OV stands for override. So if you type in PTOV here, you get this. Sure, yeah. And now when you hit the space bar, IntelliSense kicks in and suggests get model name. Yeah. So it's a very, very fast way to get an override without having to type in the words protected and override. Yeah. I mean, the less we have to type or the more that we can get the courage to type for us, the less chance of us getting it wrong. That's correct. One other thing I want to show you is let's say you are just here. I'm going to comment out this right here. And let's say you're just at that point. If you're there, maybe it's public and you want to override it. You can still use the OV template to go in there, get that, and then come in there and get the rest. So you can still do the same thing. Okay. So we've got the constituent pieces if we want to use them on their own. That's good. That's correct. All right. So let's come down here and let's create a new constructor. To create constructors, we use the CC template. That stands for constructor create. Sure. And once we do that, we're going to see all of the variables that we could initialize. Uh, and these are all the, the field variables that are not already initialized. Okay, yeah. So we only have one here, and it's called max passenger count. So I can choose select all. I just basically hit enter on this, and it will get me a new constructor for that. Okay, but that's, that's good, that is. I mean, not only are we creating a constructor, we've got the correct number of parameters, the right number of parameters, sorry, the right types of those parameters. We've got a very explicit statement to pass those parameters and assign them to the internal fields that have been stated ahead of time. And there's there's all manner of symbols in there. We've got brackets, we've got braces, we've got equal signs, some which involve a shift key. There's the right semicolon in the right place. All of this syntax has just been instantly generated for us. That's right. Now I've just added a new parameter to here. Let's come in here and type in CC again. And now you can see what's going on here. It's saying here, how about this instead? Use both of those parameters. Sure. So we can do that and just hit enter, go over here, hit enter. I'm okay with those names and I'm essentially done. Good stuff. So what happens if we don't want to select one of those parameters? Let's imagine that we have just the is grounded maybe that we're interested in for. Uh. Okay, so we can do that. So, so let's do this. CC again, and then we just come down here, just hit the space bar to toggle it, and now we hit enter. Okay, nice and simple. So pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing I want to show you with methods is how to declare a static method. So one thing you can do is if you've already got an instance method, you can just type in ST in the space bar right there, and it'll expand to static. Mm -hmm. So you can see that. That can work. You can also do it from the beginning if you use an uppercase M. So if I want a static method that returns a, a double, maybe for like get total of, or maybe get... Maybe an int instead. So it would look like that. So uppercase M, lowercase I gets me a static method. And I might get something like get total of or get max height of all planes or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. So uh, that would be my code. That's what it would look like. That's how I create statics if I want, if I know in advance. Um, but to be honest, Roy, I rarely use that. I only use it when I really know for sure that that's the case. Yeah, yeah. By the way, let me show you one more thing. Let's come in here. Let's just create a new class. I'm going to make the class static. Watch what happens here. Let's get rid of this. So watch what happens here when I use the letter M. Ah, uh, very nice. Yes. So so notice it was a lowercase m, but because I'm in a static class, I don't have to make it uppercase, and it gives me static already. Yeah, excellent. And that's it. That's the introduction on declaring methods. Those are the different features that are out there for declaring methods. There are other features in CodeRush that we'll go on to go into in other videos. One of them for declaring methods is called Deep Declare, and I will show you that in another video. Look for the Deep Declare video separately. Okay, well, thanks very much, Mark. We'll see you in the next video.